Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today is another beautiful day here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina and we're late planting our garden. <laughs> so we're expecting some rain in the next couple days here and we're going to be working in our upper garden, our corn garden. If you've been following our garden series, we're amending the soil here. We've tilled in a lot of soil amendments, mulch, compost, manure, rock dust, all sorts of good stuff to help this soil to retain moisture and to retain nutrients. And today is the day when we're going to hit it with some seeds. So this is our upper garden. It's our corn garden. We're going to be using the Earthway planter. This planter was passed from my grandpa to my dad and now it's on to me. It's a tool that'll last a lifetime. I'm going to show you a little bit about it. And we're going to get this garden planted today. It's going to be a great time here on the farm. All right. Woo! I guess the best way to start this video is to show you the cedar. So this is the Earthway Cedar. They still make this model. This is not the current model that they do make. This thing's been passed down from generations. It's probably 25, maybe 30 years old. The new model I think is about 109 bucks. There'll be a link down in the video description if you wanna check one out for yourself or get one for your garden for this year or for next year. So it comes with a little kickstand. This kickstand holds it in place. And this is the wheel that rolls along the ground right here. As that wheel rolls along the ground, it turns a belt system. This belt system right here turns, and this is the little seed pickup tray right here, okay? So it turns just like that. It actually drops a seed down in, and the seed falls down through a hole into here where it drops down into a ditch that's cut. And then this wheel comes over and presses it down after a chain drags over it. You're gonna see this thing in action in just a minute. This is your little tray and that's what holds the seeds in place. Over here you have different discs that fit different types of seeds. So this one is for radishes and this one is for beets and okra and Swiss chard. So there are all sorts of different seed plates that go with this and you can see we used the corn last year. This is for sweet corn. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna run through our rows and we've already bedded up this with the row better. If you followed the garden series, you saw what we did with the row better. Super awesome job. We're gonna cruise right along top, the top side of these rows and we're gonna plant corn and we're also gonna plant some beans in here to help fix nitrogen so that we won't have to fertilize our corn. Pretty cool. Now you probably wanna see what kind of seed we're planting. We're planting silver queen corn. We're also experimenting a little bit this year and we're gonna plant pink eye, purple hull, black eyed peas. I guess you call them black eyed peas or crowder peas. Now these peas will actually climb the stalk of the corn plant. That's going to be really, really cool. Hopefully they'll fix nitrogen and they'll cut down on any type of fertilizer we'll have to use in the garden and also shade the ground and cut down on weeding. I hope. This is an experiment for this year for this garden. We're going to try it out and we'll let you guys know if it works. If it doesn't work, we'll also let you know. Also up here in this garden, we've got various types of cantaloupes and watermelons, and we'll plant those on the peripheral edge of the garden so that the vines can grow out through here. And again, that will help cut down on the weed load here on the garden. But as you can see, there aren't a lot of weeds coming up through here right now. And we'll walk up through here as time goes on and we'll eventually spread. There's a big old pile of mulch over here and a big old pile of mulch over here. And there's a pile of compost over here. We've got a special plan for the compost, but the mulch will work up and down the rows so that we can build the soil again for next year. Good stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plant the peas. Right here is the plate for peas. So we're going to set the pea plate up inside here and basically there's a little wheel and it locks into place. So it goes on there, whoosh, turns, locks into place and as this spins it will scoop up. These are tiny scoops. It will scoop up seed and drop it through the little chute and they'll fall into the hole and then we'll cover it up. And we'll go right down each row with peas and then we'll go right in behind it with corn. So we'll probably do six rows of peas and corn and then we'll come back through and hit it with our melons. I want to show you really quickly how the plate goes on. So you just set the plate down in here and there's a little index point right on here that slides forward and we snug it down just like so tighten and now it's right into place so when our wheel rolls it'll pick up seed and drop it right in through this chute right here okay 
Very, very simple. Now, it helps to keep this machine slightly tilted that way so that it picks up the peas and it drops them right down in the chute appropriately. We'll need to raise our kickstand and we'll also need to lower our little cutting disc right here or our coulter, I guess is what you'd call it. We'll get in here, we'll loosen our wing nut up. This is how this thing works. I guess it's just a good demo. And we'll lower it down. On one side, it has a measuring device. There it is. So we want to plant these probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a half inch deep. We'll just tighten it down right there. And you can see right in here, it's indexed. It tells you how deep it is. If you work on the metric system, then right over here on this side are all your metric numbers. Pretty cool. Now, this will roll along the top of the soil. This will cut a hole in the soil. And this chain will drag the ground behind filling the dirt back in and this will pack it back in so you kind of press down on that it's pretty cool and you kind of push it like a bicycle handlebar now if you didn't have your rows all marked out already i'll show you what you can do if you wanted spacing say 24 40 inches or whatever however much spacing you have there is a spacing indicator right here to keep your rows straight so say you go down one row and it's straight as an arrow then you can continue by marking your next row right here and go right down that row and then the next row and then the next row and you can set this there's an adjustment and you can set this to however wide you want your rows to be now we already know how wide we want our rows so we won't be using that this rubber band is also 25 years old we're going to take our pea seeds that we bought at our local farm store and it says do not fill above this line right here so we're going to go ahead we'll pour in our pea seeds but we won't overfill because if we do it's just going to clog things up. This fills it up just about halfway full. And we'll get to rock and we'll get to planting. It's good stuff. As simple as this is, we raise our kickstand up. We slightly tilt to the right hand side here. And then we give her a little shove. And this soil is nice and loose. It'll slowly pick up those seeds, drop them in. Whew, it's dropping them in really fast. So we can just move right along. And we'll cruise all the way down to the end of our row here. Now, as we're cruising along here, we're paying attention to how much seed is being dropped and we want to really keep an eye on things to make sure that we're not wasting any seed. So as I cruised along right there, I noticed I was dropping a little too much seed. So I may want to go with a little bit smaller plate for a smaller seed, maybe an okra seed. The primary crop that we're seeking here is corn, not beans. And it looks like it's dropping too many beans for me, but we'll find out later on as they start to sprout. So here's what I mean. See the spacing of the scoops on this plate versus the spacing of the scoops on that plate. In other words, this will drop more seed than this one will right here. This will space them out further and it's a smaller scoop, which will suit the smaller beans. So you gotta use a little bit of common sense here. If you start dumping a ton of seed out and it says peas, well, maybe you've got a little bit smaller pea than this plate's supposed to call for. And that's just what happened to me. <laughs> this is working much, much better. Once again, as we push this, we're gonna be tilted ever so slightly to the right. The little cutter is gonna cut open the soil and the soil is loose and there's a chain right in behind that's gonna catch and drag in and fill in right in here. Pretty cool. This works really, really good on a tilled surface. You can see those seeds dropping in just beautifully down there. Very, very nice. Beautiful day to do this, guys. See how everything turns down here? Don's here. He fixed the skid loader. <laughs> awesome. So if you guys follow the vlog, the skid loader was up here and it had a huge, huge hydraulic leak. Well, we've got a new watering hole set up here for our cows. When we get our fences built here, we're trying to get prepared for our cattle operation. And it developed a huge, huge hydraulic leak. And we knew something was about to go. Turns out there was a seal on the main hydraulic pump. Don is super duper mechanically inclined. He pulled it apart, fixed it, and awesome. He's letting me use it for another week. We kind of trade services. He's coming and getting rocks off the farm 
for his landscaping deal and he's letting me use a skid loader. Pretty rad. So we've got our peas all planted up here and we're gonna go ahead and swap out our pea plate. It's a little bit on the, there we go, on the difficult side to swap these plates out. And you need to make sure that your seed hopper is completely empty and inevitably you will have, I'll show you, some broken or cracked up type seeds, some like half seeds in there, kind of like popcorn kernels. Whenever you get a, uh, a bag of popcorn, you're gonna have some broken kernels. So we'll pop this guy in here. Very, very simple. This is our sweet corn and this is our silver queen. This is what we like here on the farm. And I did mix in some other corn that a neighbor gave me. So we're gonna have a little bit of variety of rainbow type corn, I guess. We'll fill this guy up. With each fill, and we're going down about a 150 foot row, with each fill we're getting down one row and back the next. So we get about 300 feet-ish out of each fill on the hopper of this right here. So if you're doing your own garden, if you're planting your own corn like this, what we're doing is we're giving our corn a little bit more space than we gave it last year. So we want to give it some space. We want to reduce our fertilizer load. We want to provide organic material for the soil. And we're actually widening our rows out by about 18 inches so that the corn gets plenty of space to grow big and wide. And we can get in there and pick the corn without getting beat to death. Last year, we had a ton of corn. We had great production, but the corn plants were so close together. We got a windstorm in here. Three plants blow over, which makes 300 plants blow over. And that's not what we want. We want strong, tall, robust corn plants. Let's get busy. While we're doing our corn, we actually set the depth to one inch, and that seems to be the best for the peas and for the corn. The reason we're showing you this is because it's a huge, huge time saver, and you don't need to go spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a coal planter or a corn planter. You don't need to be all over Craigslist trying to find something that plants two rows of corn. When you're just going to do a small garden like this, this only takes probably 20 minutes to run through the entire garden and get it done, and you're done for the year put it up, clean it up, and use it again next year. Year after year, this is something, if you care for it, it's gonna last you a long, long time. You see our seed, we'll go real slow here. Our seed drops in the ground, chain covers it up. Very, very, very simple little apparatus. Such a huge, huge time saver hard to use <laughs> with one hand and holding the camera but such a huge time saver well worth the hundred bucks it costs it'll pay for itself over the years of service So we've been out here for about an hour and actual planting time, I'm gonna say is somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 minutes for this quarter acre garden. That is super duper cool. What makes a big difference is having really, really loose soil. So we used a tiller, a rototiller to till this up. If you follow our garden series, if you follow our channel a little bit, you'll learn a little bit more about how we till up the soil and what we do. We want to cross over into no-till, but for right now, we've got to till some amendments into our soil. Eventually, we'll be crossing over into no-till. Now, this amount of corn is way, way too much for our family. It's just me and my wife. So this will be for our hogs. This will also be for our family, for our parents, for our grandparents, for our neighbors. We'll be sharing these vegetables with all sorts of people. It cost me about $60 to plant this entire garden, not in counting the diesel fuel or whatever and the time that it took me to do it. But what a rewarding thing to give this kind of stuff to your neighbors and to your family and also when we have our pigs up here that's going to be really cool because we'll be feeding them right off the land awesome so we're going to get through here and basically we're just going to plant our cantaloupe seeds about a half inch deep and plant them in the hills about four feet apart all the way down this last row and we'll do the same thing with our watermelons i have not had a lot of success with watermelons and cantaloupes but we'll find out for this year the next video we do is going to be 
fencing this in. So we're gonna show you how we do our deer fencing. On any given night, there are probably 40 deer up in this upper field behind me and it's all planted in clover. So that keeps the deer off of our garden spots and out of our orchard, but they'll eventually work their way down here and get into these beans if we don't fence them in. So be sure you catch the next video in our gardening series. We're gonna show you an awesome, effective way to keep deer out of your garden. I swear it works, it's awesome. And you don't have to have electricity. It's a very simple install. It'll take you probably an hour to fence an entire garden like this in and you won't have to worry about deer all season long. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the farm vlog today. I got a little bit of okra to plant in our other garden. We'll see you next time in the next video in our gardening series. I appreciate you. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed, we've got a lot of wonderful stuff here to share with you on the Stony Ridge farm. All right, woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge.